In this episode, we cover ground in Malaysia and India and give an overview of the Tobacco Products Directive, the TPD, and its revision, as it will influence all regulatory framework development globally. We start in Malaysia, where taxation on equipment and non-nicotine e-liquid has been proposed by the government. How will this impact smokers and vapors in the country? And what is being done to address the issue? In the previous episode of The Advocate's Voice, we noted that the Malaysian government had announced a 10% tax on devices and zero nicotine e-liquids in the 2021 budget. Kerajaan juga akan mengenakan duty excise pada kadar ad valorem 10% ke atas semua jenis peranti rokok elektronik dan bukan elektronik, termasuk vape. Advocates in Malaysia were understandably concerned about this announcement. They have been fighting for the right to vape since 2015. There have been rumblings for years about the use of harm-reduced products and how to regulate them, if at all. All that momentum and optimism evaporated like the vapor from an e-cigarette when Malaysia's Muslim religious authorities issued a fatwa or religious edict on vaping. Culturally speaking, 63% of the population define themselves as Muslim. The question of whether vaping should be forbidden has caused much controversy in Malaysia. In 2015, the National Council declared vaping haram, forbidden. Haram. However, since 2015, the science has shown that vaping is at least 95% safer than smoking, and many former smokers in Malaysia have switched to vaping. MOVE have a change.org petition in response to the 2021 budget announcement on taxation. Advocates there are aiming for at least 10,000 signatures on this petition. We now speak with Samsul Arafin from MOVE Harm Reduction Association Malaysia about the situation on the ground. Thank you for joining us today, Sam. Do you believe that the entrance of a big tobacco company into the vape market is the reason for this new tax on equipment and non-nicotine liquid? Well, um, let's look at it from, from the beginning. At first, um, the vape community have the impression that the big tobaccos are against vaping, but right now, the situation has changed. We are very clear that the uh, big tobacco wants to get into the uh, vape industry. And of course, Malaysia being one of the biggest um, consumer market of vape products, I'm quite sure um, that it's not a coincidence, let me put it that way. Yeah, the short answer of to your question is, I think there is a relation to both of those announcements. Yeah. Thank you, Sam Sol. My pleasure. What exactly is the reason behind the vape ban in India? And what about the rights of the vapors and millions of smokers there? Is there a chance for a change of heart in the government to reverse this ban? India has one of the highest smoking and harm from smoking rates in the world. A country of over 1.5 billion people and a smoking rate of 12% means that over 1 million people there smoke. In September 2019, the government of India banned all e-cigarette and safer nicotine products. What the cabinet has given approval today is first a decision to ban e-cigarettes. The government instituted the ban on guidance received from the World Health Organization and anti-smoking proponents who advised policymakers they should either restrictively regulate or ban safer nicotine products to prevent youth uptake. Some in India say that the underlying real reason is the government's interests in tobacco manufacturing and distribution, and that safer products were a threat to the government purse. We speak with Samrat Chowdhury of AVI India. Samrat, thank you for joining us today. First, I'd like to ask you about the ban in India. Do you believe that there were foreign interests that influenced the government in order to implement this ban? Well, the short answer is yes, definitely yes. So the Bloomberg Philanthropies Network, you know, it, it funds not just uh, private NGOs, non-governmental organizations. 
but it also directly funds state departments which work in tobacco control of course that is going to give you a seat at the table and since you are funding that department for its work of course the chances are high that you will be able to influence policy and uh, this is across india you know and uh, this is declared on the bloomberg website so it's not that uh, there is any debate about it and do you believe that this type of influence is happening outside of india in other countries of course i you know there are indications that it's happening across the globe not just in india uh, you know from our, uh, from the mexican consumer advocacy organization we believe or we are hearing that uh, the union funded ngos are similarly trying to uh, uh, shift the narrative influence policy and also trying to disenfranchise consumers so it appears to be a global template which is uh, you know i would step a little far and say that it is corruption because you are using money to influence outcomes and uh, the sad thing is they are getting away with it because the way the fctc is framed it's very easy to disenfranchise people who do not agree with you because you just uh, raise the banner of article 5.3 and uh, anyone who disagrees with you can be cast as tobacco industry and therefore delegitimize thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today now to europe the tobacco products directive known as the tpd has been under review by the european commission will the revision to the tpd benefit vapors or will it punish them the tobacco products directive known as the tpd entered into force in the European Union in 2016. It covers the regulation of tobacco products as well as safer nicotine products, including e-cigarettes, nicotine e-liquid, and snus. It will be a massive unintended consequence if as a result of this directive, uh, fewer people gave up smoking. E-cigarettes will be regulated as a tobacco product. These need to be available wherever cigarettes are. They're a consumer product, they're not a medicine. It is the precedent and the benchmark for regulatory frameworks globally around safer nicotine products. It includes provision for health warnings on packaging, bans on promotion and advertising, nicotine strengths, bottle sizes, as well as provision for detailed reports on ingredients and the creation of smoke-free environments Europe-wide. The provisions of TPD have been reviewed by the European Commission and their findings are found in the preliminary SHEER report, which was up for public consultation in October 2020. In it, there were many guidelines and recommendations that consumers found concerning. We will not know the full impact of the report and what the revision will look like until May 2021. Now we go to a summary of issues in the Asia-Pacific region. In Thailand, authorities there are using statistics from the U.S. CDC 2019 National Health Survey to justify continuing the ban on e-cigarettes. The survey found that the rate of smoking remained the same among 18 to 24-year-olds at 14%, but that e-cigarette use increased from the previous year by 3.2% to 4.5%. Authorities in Thailand stated that despite the increase in e-cigarette use, smoking rates have not declined. Therefore, e-cigarettes are not designed to help smokers quit and the ban should remain. Pakistan is one of 15 countries worldwide with a heavy burden of tobacco-related ill health. Based on the World Health Organization's standardized estimate of smoking prevalence, 19.1% of adults smoke. There is a new consumer advocacy organization in Pakistan fighting for the right to vape for adult smokers. This group is called the Association for Smoking Alternatives in Pakistan, shortened to ASAP. In Australia, the human right to health of vapors and smokers means nothing. The TGA has announced that as of October 2021, regulations will be in place that consumers will require a doctor's prescription to legally access nicotine e-cigarettes and liquid nicotine in Australia. There will be no imports without a doctor's prescription and there is no compulsion for general practitioners to offer this service to their patients. Thank you for joining us. 
Obviously, there is a disconnect between the rights of adult consumers to make informed choices and government policymakers. We all need to remind these politicians that they work for us and not the other way around. Until next time, stay safe and be well.